In this video, I'm going to show you how you can highlight date ranges in your Power BI reports. I'm going to show you how you can achieve this natively. And I'm also going to show you how you can give your users the ability to adjust these using sliders. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's just jump right into this demo here by showing you this report that I prepared for you today. It's a super simple one, which is using the Northwind Traders dataset, which is the one that we typically use. And I've already built the dataset behind this, the data model, just because it's not this sort of focus for today. So as you can see, we have already a few tables here, the categories table, categorizing all of the products. Here are the products, the product names and IDs. We have have uh, the different orders and when they were ordered, as well as the order details. So how much were ordered and at what price. I've also created a calculations measure table, which just has one measure, the sales, which is what we're going to visualize in our line chart for today. It just calculates the sales by multiplying the quantity against the unit price. And I've also already pre-created a calendar table, which is a best practice that I give as a tip to everyone who might be wanting to do some time intelligence calculations. So it has a date column and a month grouped from that date column. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to create a line chart by dragging the month uh, grouped column here with the sales measure. And then I'm going to convert this into a line chart, just so that we can visualize how this looks like. And here you go. So the objective that we have for today is to highlight certain sections of the line chart, basically blurring out the rest that is not selected. And uh, we want to be able to do that using a slicer. Now, the original thinking, or you might be thinking, oh, well, you might just put a date a value here, and then just change it into a slicer. But the problem with this and um, this is the kind of the look that we want to go for in the end is that how well this slicer will work, it filters the actual line chart itself instead of highlighting and the highlighting effect is what we want to achieve. So the first thing that we're going to want to make sure of is that the X axis for the line charts is continuous. And that basically makes sure that the, the line chart is a time period and that we will be able to kind of control it later using the sort of reference lines and some measures. So you can make sure that it's continuous by going to the properties under type, you will see it's continuous. And if it's categorical, just choose continuous. The next thing that we will need to do is we'll need to add those reference lines so that um, we can assign or create that visual showing where or what we are kind of highlighting. And to do that, we will stick into the formatting pane here on the right hand side and then under reference lines. So when you hit add a line here, we'll add two lines. The first line we will choose well, both. They will both be X axis. And then for now, we will choose a random date. So let's just say one one nineteen ninety seven because our period is from ninety six to ninety eight and so yeah so here we are so it's what is just done is it's created an x axis line a, a sort of a vertical line that goes to that specific date that we've chosen now you can change the colors and other properties that you might want but the important part here is that um, you make sure that the shaded area is turned on. Now it's colored blue by default, but you can change that into a white just to make that color slightly shaded. So as you can see now, the ones or the, the area before the line that we have created is sort of shaded and you can make that even more drastic by increasing this number here or maybe decreasing it. Here we go. So if we put it even to 10%, it's even more drastic. Now, obviously, as you change the value here in our line reference, that also adjusts the area that's being shaded. And what I like to do here is just to add the data label next to the reference line so that we know what that range is or what that reference line is from. And at the moment, it's just defaulted to the current data value, which is perfectly fine. And that's it. So now that we've done that first reference line, now let's adjust the second line to shade the values after. So we're going to change that into an X axis. So we're going to follow essentially the same steps. So under the lines, we'll change this one to, let's say 1997 for now, or maybe 1998, something like this. And then let's shade the area 
You can adjust the position of the shading to be after, change the transparency to the same value as what we have before, change that into white, and then let's add the data label. Let's just make sure that the position is on the right so that we have this whole section that we have highlighted kind of free. And there you go. So that's pretty much the visual part of, of the solution done. Now what we want to be able to do is to adjust the line charts or the reference lines to be controlled using a slider. And for that, we're going to use this disconnected table concept, which is a concept that I covered in a separate video. So check that one out if you haven't yet. And uh, this solution uses it in a slightly different way. So if you wanted to learn more about different ways that you can and use disconnected tables that video covers it in full so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create a new table a new calendar table that we will be able to adjust independent uh, without being related to any of the tables here so that as we filter that it doesn't change the values or it doesn't filter the values in this visual so we're going to go to modeling under new table we're going to name this one highlights table and then we'll call this one calendar auto, which basically just takes any date columns that you have within your model and gets the earliest and the latest. And it just generates a single column table for us. So which we don't really need anything more than that. So we're going to just do calendar auto. And then this is what we're going to use for our slicer. So if I change this into a slicer visual, as you can see, 1996 to 1998, as I adjust this, nothing happens yet. So we're going to create measures to then track what is the earliest date that is selected and what is the latest date selected from this and adjust the reference lines accordingly. So let's have a go at doing that. So I'm going to name this one earliest, just creating a new measure here. I'm going to do min, and then we're going to say highlights table date which uh, I'm just going to put it into a card here just so that we can see what that looks like. Yep. So that looks like it works. So 27th of July and it adjusts as I make this selection. So that looks like it works. So let's do the same thing for the latest. Highlight table date. Here we are. And then the last thing to do is to adjust the reference lines. So this one must be the earliest. So we're going to change instead of writing the values here, we'll choose conditional formatting here next to it and change the value based on what is in this earliest measure. Uh, same thing with the latest. And there we go. So as you can see now, as I adjust the slider, so does the reference line here on our visual. Lastly, one of the things that you might want to know when you are making these selections is to do some sort of calculation with whatever you have selected. So for example, we are looking at the total sales and basically making a selection based on date ranges. And you might want to know, let's say the total amount of sales that have happened in that selected period. I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to do that without doing so much DAX calculation. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to create an inactive relationship between the table that we've just created to the order date table, which is where the calendar table is uh, related to. So you just to do that, you just need to drag and drop to create that relationship. So there's no conflict. That's why it's creating a an active relationship. But we want this to be inactive because at the moment, if you go back to here, you will see that because it's related and there is a relationship, it does filter your visual. So what we want to make sure to do is untick this one, make this relationship. Active. What it will do is it will just add that dotted relationship here, which is exactly what we need. So as you can see, the filter hasn't happened yet, which we are going to control in DAX. So we are going to create a new measure right here, a selected sales, and we're going to use the calculate function, use the sales measure that we've just created so we don't have to recreate it. And then we're going to activate the inactive relationship that we've just done. So between the highlights table date column to the order dates from the orders table. So what it will do is it will, it will calculate the sales, which is you know doing its normal sum x, except that instead of, and only in this context, it's trying to calculate the sum total in that selected period. So that way we are able to highlight the values within the, the line chart without actually filtering it. 
So I'm going to change that into a card here. So you can add it as a, a subtitle or a title or a card. But the whole idea is as you make selection, you will see that it gives you the total sales based on what you have selected. Pretty handy, right? And that's really it for this video. Hope you now know how easy it is to create this uh, highlighting feature natively in your Power BI report. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.